Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for clicking this video and deciding I'm going to spend some time here today. I appreciate it. And we are going to do a little get ready with me session with um, some things that I've found in my collection. Also some new things. It's a mix of drugstore. It's a mix of high end. Just a little bit of everything. It's not so much about the products. It's more about the theme of the look. It's going to be a soft spring look. We're going to do kind of a, I don't know, softly coral eye today featuring the Juvia's Place Nubian 3 Coral coral palette. This is kind of new to me and I just really want to use it today. As you can see, it's got kind of an interesting cool and warm mix, but I'm excited to use that on the eyes today and just kind of center the look around that palette. So starting off with one of the newer things, it's the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer, the illuminating version. I know she's had these products out, but I recently received it in PR, so it feels pretty new. And I swatched this one on my hand the other day, and you know I'm kind of liking the glowy primers, the softly glowy primers primers and I feel like this is going to come under that category. Nice little additional layer of moisture added to the skin. Feels good just going across my skin, you know? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. They also have a blurring one and a hydrating one, but this was the first one I wanted to test out, and I think it looks pretty. Then we're going to go back to an oldie but a goodie and an almost empty here. This is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. Probably can't really call it old. It's been around for a year or so. I've added a pump to mine, and I wear the shade Light 2-3, and I guess I guess I haven't really spoken about this one recently in a video, but I've really, really enjoyed this foundation over time. I've loved how it actually has some really pretty coverage. It's not too dewy or tacky. It actually wears really well on my skin. I've got to say, though, currently, absolutely nothing is beating the fresh all-day staying power of Rimmel Lasting Finish. I have loved that so much. It's been working so well for me, and I'm pairing it with the Stay Matte Primer and that does seem to make a difference. And it's not like it makes it look dry or look f too flat or unnatural on my skin. It just looks really good and it looks good all day. And at times when I would expect I need to touch up, I don't, so I love that. This L'Oreal is no slouch. It's been a good one for me. I mean, I've almost used it up entirely. That's saying something. Like, yeah, it's got some hyaluronic acid in there, but it's definitely packing a punch. I think when it comes to coverage, gives me really strong medium coverage and just looks really nice across the skin. Got a big weekend coming up. On Saturday we've got like a cheer showcase thing happening. Just right here locally like all the teams get to show off their routines and stuff. We got that on Saturday. We got Easter coming up on Sunday of course. I'm shooting this on Thursday. Um, I've been kind of an assistant to the Easter Bunny so I've done some of that work yesterday. I've got my L'Oreal True Match concealer here. This is the Radiant Serum Concealer so their newer one. The one that has 1.5% hyaluronic acid and caffeine. I have worn this in videos, but I thought I haven't really worn these two together. And sometimes, you know, when you pair things from brands that are like from the same line in a certain brand, sometimes it works out well. So I'm just going to dab this all around and blend it with my e.l.f. brush. Taking my small end, moving my dots around. This concealer has done surprisingly well for me. It's very lightweight. It's very thin. It's not going to be your fullest coverage, but yet I think I have a really good shade for my skin. It's just like walking the line between being nice and brightening, but also still able to actually cover. So we're going around all the nooks and crannies, and then I take my big end of my brush and just get it all blended. And I wear the shade Light C1 in this, and I'm Light 2-3 in the foundation. See, look at that. Doesn't that look pretty? I think these two things are layering together really nice. Nicely, I should say. Sometimes I know the proper grammar, I just don't feel like saying it at the moment. <laughs> so many cute Easter things at our town's combo Dollar Tree and Family Dollar, primarily on the Dollar Tree side. Just perfect Easter basket types of things. And some nice little things like in the beauty section, like little cooling gel eye masks, and got nail polishes, and lip gloss, and just fun things to throw in. Mine seems to have a huge section of like kind of educational types of toys. Those great little like portable magnet scene type of things like, you know, reusable stickers, but they're magnets and they come in their own little tins. I got some of those. Really cute eggs you can fill for like an egg hunt. Some cute little car ones and ones that look like fruits and vegetables that are absolutely adorable. The lady at the checkout was like, these are so cute. So concealer is blended. Um, at certain angles, you know, I can maybe see where this concealer 
just does, is not doing the absolute most, but I do think it's layering up really beautifully with the foundation from L'Oreal. It is brightening me up, and I think after my setting powder step, it's going to be really all good. Setting powder I pulled out is my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder, translucent. One of the great loose powder options in the drugstore. I do love my Maybelline Fit Me, but this is a great one too. I just pick some up on my little triangle puff, and today I'm feeling like I could use a little more coverage. I'm laying it down and then I'll dust away the excess. So I've been thinking a lot about this, um, especially with Biddy. Maybe you guys can weigh in with your experiences with your kids, but do you ever notice how like a kid goes to school and they're really behaving? You know, they've got their teacher, they've got their classmates, and they are holding it together, let's say, like throughout the day. They're listening, they're doing well, they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. And then they come home and it's as though they have to like blow off steam. There will maybe be more moodiness or just kind of like a release of emotion that's maybe been pent up throughout the day because, oh, I have to follow the rules of school and all this. I see that in her. And I think I saw it even more like throughout kindergarten and now in first grade, it's just a little more like sporadic when I'll see it, but I'll usually know why it is. And I think it's just because like, okay, I've put in some big days at school. I've also had, you know, my, my different activities that I do. And sometimes it comes out at cheer. I find it hard to coach her in particular because the difference between Belle and Eve right now is when I coach Belle's team, like I could be anyone they're coaching and she's able to, I think it's just a maturity level thing and an age thing. She's with her team and it's not like, oh, I'm going to run over to my mom and, and complain to her extra or talk to her more or do this, that, and the other because she's my mom coaching. No, she just does what she does and she does not treat me any different. Like I could be any of the other coaches there and she's really able to separate that in her mind. Like that's my mom, but right now she's my coach and I will treat her as such. When I coach Biddy's team, it's like she has trouble with that separation and she'll be more likely to do all these things that like she would never do to another coach or teacher. Like she's always running up to me. She'll come up if she's got anything bothering her, like any little complaint, she'll say it to me. It just makes it kind of hard for me to coach her. And I mean, the team has done fantastically well. I'm really happy with the progress as a whole and everything, but it's just a little thing I've noticed. It might not be an ability thing. It might just be a choice thing that she's saying, I don't want to designate you as coach here, apart from being my mom. You are, you're standing here. I will treat you as my mom. So that's been a little tricky. And then you pair that with what I just explained about kids getting home from school and kind of needing that unwind. And then yet here's another situation where she's got to sort of hold it together. And we don't have issues all the time and other people involved might not even notice that it's happening, but it's just behaving in a way like I'm her mommy as opposed to I'm her coach. I see it and it makes it kind of tricky for me. We need to move on with the makeup. Um, this is my dibs stick and this is the one in, I swear I have good up close eyesight, but I cannot see what the shade is, but I will look it up online. But basically the combo, the blush shade is a little bit peachy and the bronzer is my, probably one of my softer ones and it is kind of warm but I work with it and I kind of do like it still. And I really like the texture of these dib sticks. The convenience of the double stick is nice. And so I'm taking my Sephora 56 and I'll just blend that in. Again, I've just got powder over pretty much my T-zone from that uh, Wet n Wild Translucent. See how it's kind of warm and toasty, but it, it's not too much and it can be fully worked into the skin. The funny thing is about practice too, like an hour of it is working on their cheer routine and then an hour of it is tumbling. And I'm one of the people who works with the routines. And when I see Biddy go over and like work with another coach for tumbling, I can see she's treating that person like a coach. And I'm like, can you just treat me like a coach for an hour or two? <laughs> All right, so there's the bronzer and then we're gonna do the blush side. Oops, I always open up the wrong side. Blush I think is gonna work well and coordinate nicely with the whole vibe of the eye. Then I just grab my other 56. You could use the same 56, but I've got two, so I used two. And my little red one is my blush one. So we're just dabbing over that. You notice I'm not doing a big like back and forth swipe, gentle pressing. Soft, just the shade I'm looking for, easy to work with, but I thought it might be fun to layer something on top too. I thought, what about a little Milani Luminoso? This is also very soft color wise, but it has a really nice finish. Beautiful baked blush from Milani. We're gonna go into it with the e.l.f. blush brush. 
and just see what a little bit of this added on top. I'm seeing more peachiness and just a little bit of sheen, but it looks almost more airbrushed on this side. I really like Luminoso on top of things. It really looks pretty. And see how that's just enough glow right now? Like, I'm not even feeling compelled to pull in a separate highlighter. This is part of the soft spring vibe, I think, for me. This looks softly glowy as is. Then we're going to do brows. I'm going to do my lovely um, Estee Lauder Brow Perfect 3D All-in-One Styler in Cool Brown. I love this product for its convenience, its quality. It's got the pencil, it's got a little powder dabber, and it's got your gel all in one. And all three products work really beautifully. So I'm just using the pencil side to get a little fill in here. I've always said Biddy is my middle child with main character energy. It's just funny the different temperaments of kids in the same family. But also how they're all ever evolving, you know? Like when Belle was little and just starting pre-K, oh, she couldn't have been more clinging to mommy. And now she's just very independent, very confident, and things are always changing. And maybe that's your comfort at times that are hard or that you don't really understand. Whatever phase you're in, you're not going to be in that phase forever. Heck, I'm 40 and I think I'm still going through phases too. We got a really good fill in on those brows, but a lovely next little step you can take if you want to is take the powder dapper and go over them. And it just kind of like, I don't know, it fills some gaps. If any little imperfections still exist, it's a quick way to go about it. Or you could just go straight to that. If you want to bypass the pencil, it's cool. And then we have our little gel. It's just a clear gel. And it really does hold. And that's in the bottom. It is the thing I think I'm going to run out of first in this pencil, though. So that's sometimes the challenge. With multiple products in one, it's like you don't use them all at the same rate. <laughs> Next, I'm going to use some Milani eyeshadow primer. So over spring break, we were at home a lot, but toward the end of the week, we went to St. Louis. We stayed at a Drury Inn, the one that's conveniently right there by Union Station. It's like just the best place to stay because you're just across the street to all your activities. And I love how they do that hot breakfast every morning. It's really good. And like you go down the buffet and you can have a biscuit and gravy and you can have potatoes and eggs and all that. And of course, when I was no longer staying there, I really wanted that. So for my meal prep this week, you know what I did? I wanted the potatoes and eggs type of thing. So I cut up potatoes and I learned this just through the Michaela Thomas meal prep that I often do. It's really easy to cut up your potatoes, toss them in the air fryer, do like 10 minutes and then kind of stir them around and then do another five at 400 and they come out like perfect little fried potatoes, you know, but without all the grease and the frying. So I put that in one side of my meal prep and then I made a frittata and that took care of my egg side because really what I just want is the egg and the potato. So the frittata had in it tomatoes and spinach and cheese. It was really good, um, really flavorful too. And I thought that's a meal prep I'm going to do again and again because I really like eggs. Another thing that I get sometimes that I'll give the kids especially are the mini quiches from Aldi. Air fried those as well and they turn out so good cut them in half so they're not so piping hot give them a couple of those like on the side of whatever they're eating they're really good um, so here we are with the Juvia's Place palette. It's the Nubian 3 Coral, and um, I mean, Juvia's Place does some really beautiful palettes, but something about the color spread in this one definitely caught my eye. I don't know when this first came out. I have no idea how new it is, but I've just been a little more conscious of Juvia's Place <laughs> lately in my makeup routine, and I wanted to try it. I do want kind of a softly coral thing going on. I, at some point in time, I'm totally going to do the combination of cool meets warm, but today I think I'm going to do mostly the coral and I'm going to go down here to this coral in the corner. It's the most like kind of pinky coral and I'm going to start that out in my crease softly with my Profusion crease brush. Yesterday I did a look really similar to this and that's what made me like want to shoot a video on this type of look. It was soft on the cheeks, you know, not too shimmery, sort of a coral vibe on eyes and cheeks, although I didn't use this particular palette, but everything felt kind of monochromatic, sort of connected. I'm going to go over to this shade too, like a soft, what do we call this, rosy brown, and I'm going to work that into my crease. I'm liking this really soft and easy. The palette I actually used yesterday was from Buxom. It's the straight up eye and cheek palette. This was a very soft natural eye for me. The blush actually is really pretty in that one. This is going to provide a little more contrast for us. Um, let's bounce down to this one too. Looking more terracotta where this is more peachy pink. Let's get a little bit of that going. Yeah. 
there's a little more color for us just back and forth in the crease and every time it's hitting the crease we're also letting it kind of raise up as well raise up sheer out oh I love that I'm really blending it up a lot like almost to my brow just letting it sheer out to that point okay then I want to take do I want to get dark brown with it I think I'll take a little and if I don't like it I can layer up more I mean I know I'll like it but I'm just wondering if it fits the vibe of my look all right it's not incredibly dark I'm patting that on my outer lid I'm actually surprised it's not a little deeper, but I think you could build it. So there we are, outer lid, it's meeting the crease. I want to go in with my smaller brush, my small pointed from Profusion. Love this brush. Going to go into some of that and some of this. So we're softening that shade just slightly and hitting the crease with the combination of those two and see how it's really beautifully merging that darkness with the coral crease. Okay, so a little dab in here, a little dab in here. Perfect softening crease combo. And this is just to make sure you're lifting that up from your lid a little bit because that's what I'm finding. You know, as you're getting older, you need that little outer lift to come up, maybe even a little higher than you used to, so it can peak up and not be covered by any hoodedness that's developing in the eyes. And then I'm thinking it might be pretty to take this shade right here. Yeah, that's, gosh, got a really pretty soft pearly finish. Let's take a little bit of that and work it across the remaining part of the lid. If you need your Easter makeup look, oh, love that. And these are shades maybe you could turn up in other palettes. Think, you know, do I have some mid-tone corals? Do I have a deepish brown? Do I have a soft, shimmery peach eyeshadow? And then you've basically got the look. Again, I'm putting it in the inner part first because this is kind of shimmery and bright, and I want most of the product to go there, and then I just want it to gently overlap what else is happening on the lid. Very easy look. I want it to be soft and that's what it is. Then I'm thinking this color might be perfect for a little lower lash line definition. So dipping straight into that with the tip of my small pointed brush. Oh yeah, that's great because it's not too orangey, but it's giving us just a little something there. See the difference in definition between the two eyes? Great. Loving. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys about this. I grabbed this from um, Maybelline. It was at Walmart. They had these color tattoo 24-hour um, eye sticks, and this says matte, which interested me because I don't have a lot of matte ones in this brown color. I'm trying to find the shade name. I am determined. So I thought, let's take that and kind of go across the upper lash line. It's not super duper dark, guys. I used it the other day on the lower lash line. I thought it looked perfect there. On the upper lash line, you know, it's just giving me a soft, soft, gentle bit of depth close to the lashes. It's like a medium to deep cool brown. There is a softness to its color, so it's not going to show up in a stark way, and that's kind of what I want, just right here across my upper lash line. Really nice. Okay. Then, um, in a Milani PR package, I got this highly rated Lash Extensions Mascara. This is their tubing mascara, um, colored like this because they want you to make the connection that this is like Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. Well, I've used this once. I wasn't huge on it, but I kind of think I want to retry it now. I just want to see if I've changed my mind, because sometimes I do. And I really am impressed by ELF's tubing mascara, the one called Lash Extender. And I just sort of want an idea of this one fresher in my mind because right now it's kind of like those are two of the big name tubing mascaras. So I'm really holding my lashes in that curler for a long time. That's what I do. I pulse it and I feel like that helps. That's what David told me to do. So that's what I do. I do get a really nice curl. Now we're going into this brush that has the cone shaped brush and very, very short bristles. I don't know, it, it's going on seeming not quite as wet as I remembered my first tube of this to be. It still is like, I think, a pretty creamy feeling formula, but that first coat went on rather nicely and very black. 
I actually have a tube of this that I put in the girl's makeup bag for when I have to do their cheer makeup. Um, definitely recommend a tubing mascara if you have to do any kind of kid cheer or dance makeup, theater makeup, because, you know, it won't smudge on them. It's not going to smear on their face, but then when it comes time to take the makeup off, it won't be nearly as resistant as waterproof will be. It will just kind of come off in those little sort of rubbery bits, as opposed to feeling like, gosh, am I making their eyes sensitive by having to scrub, scrub, scrub this waterproof mascara off. Some waterproof mascaras are just really hard to get off. Much easier experience for all involved if you just go with a tubing mascara. And of course my girls have really thick, long, eyelashes so like any mascara I would put on them would be like oh yeah it's doing well I mean Biddy in particular her, she looks like she's got a set of false lashes permanently on there they are so dark they are so incredibly long and thick she got that from Bub's side and then she got the darkness from my side so she really ended up with the perfect <laughs> perfect lash combo Bubba's got really a lot of lashes but they're not quite as dark as hers and Belle's got pretty thick lashes too okay so this this mascara, the thing about it is it is kind of wet and that's probably why I didn't fall in love with it at first. So I'm not going to try to load it up with too many back-to-back -back coats right at this time. I'm going to let this rest a little bit and then I will come back and add more. I got a little dab of it on here. I guess I could go ahead and put some on the lower lashes while I'm waiting, right? I don't know if you can hear that, but the heat keeps coming on every morning. I think you can hear it because sometimes when I'm editing, I can too, and there's a vent like straight above, but it's cold. <laughs> it's exactly 32 degrees outside, so yeah, it keeps kicking on. Like even right now, as I'm touching it, this stuff has been on my lashes for a bit, and I, it still feels a little bit tacky. I think now might be the time to do one final coat. Can I just say we have still been watching Little House on the Prairie every night? Like, I know I talked about this, I think it was last summer, like we started watching Little House and we're still on it. I don't even remember what season we're on, but Laura and Almanzo are together. And we've had some really dramatic episodes lately, really dramatic. And then Kristen Game sent me the Instagram of the actor who plays Almanzo, who currently does like little videos and clips. If you follow him, you'll get to see some of the people who are still living um, as part of the cast. So, okay, we're staying there on the lashes. Some curl has dropped a little bit with this one. I think that's sort of what's setting the e.l.f. apart from this, the e.l.f. lash extender. I think that one was less weighty on my lashes, and that's why I've enjoyed that one. Okay, we're going to move on to the lip. We're going to do a soft little lip here that I think is going to coordinate nicely with things. Um, this is my e.l.f. Cream Glide Lip Liner. I really like the texture of this lip liner. It's in the mauve side shade, I believe. I like the texture. Its staying power is not as good as Revlon, but it's really, really easy to put on, and I like the tone a lot. It is similar to First Move from Hard Candy, if you have that. Gosh, I need to sharpen it. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to fill in the whole lips with this, which is a really nice color just all on its own. I blend it in. It's really creamy, but then I've gotten these lipsticks from Lancome, and guys, they're beautiful. Look at that gold rose thing there. There's a little gold that comes out here. The soft, like, kind of shimmery sheen on the rest of the packaging, and you tap that, this comes out, yes. So these are their Intimate Labsolu Rouge, and this is the shade First Kiss. And I thought this might be good. It's a little bit on the pinky side, adding a little of this to my lip color. I really like the shade called Hush Hush as well. I haven't tried all of these different colors yet. Um, maybe a try on is in order. Hush Hush is even more pinky. This really suits this look. And then I thought, how about topping it off with some gloss? I've got Rimmel Stay Glossy in this shade called um, Bare Minimum. And it just looks like a creamy nude, but I don't think it's gonna be super opaque. Oh yes, this is just perfect. I wanted the lip to do a little something but not be too deep and not too colorful with this look. That's my kind of nude lip right there. I like that. Who's there? Hello, baby. Hello, mommy. How are you, Angel? Good. Not opening your eyes yet because of the brightness? We need to give you some little sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to say hi to Biscuits. She's right there in the pink chair. She's my security and she apparently let you in. <laughs> 
I was talking about how nice your eyelashes are, Biddy. They're very lush, very thick. I wish I could just have a double of those on mine, but I'll just be working with mascaras to try to get there. So this is my finished look, you guys. Um, a soft spring makeup look, kind of monochromatic, kind of peachy. I thought this was fun how we combined both high-end and drugstore, both. Don't you love when the hair just stays, <laughs> stays up when you take the clip out? High-end drugstore, older, newer. I'm liking the way the overall complexion looks. Um, I think the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum is always a win. Also, do you see I have a little bunny back there? <laughs> ground now. We love the Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. It looks nice and fresh alongside that concealer that's definitely not too heavy and brighten me up a little bit too. The blush shade is perfect and soft. Um, it's working with the eye stuff, which I'm very excited to try that eye palette with the cool warm combo because that's what makes that kind of special. I think a lot of palettes could give you this general look. And then that lip. Isn't that just lovely? really enjoying this. So hopefully this gives you a little inspiration going into spring, going into Easter time. Um, thank you so much for watching, my friends. I really appreciate that you uh, take the time to have this on, whether you're working around the house or working out or just relaxing after a long day. Thank you for making me part of your day, and I will see you all again very, very soon. I love you. Bye.